Do you ever wonder why we're here? Also, welcome back. Hanako just wanted some help to find Lily, that's all. He apparently disapproves of my motivations. I'll get it. Looks like I misjudged you. You're infiltrating them, aren't ya? Going deep on the gr- Blah. Going deep on the cover. I should have guessed. Letting the truth slip by him would probably be better than outright lying or annoying him, just in any case. Is that why you're here? Obviously. It sucks, but there's no better way to get intel than going in yourself. We gotta stick together, man. This is a harsh school. A harsh world. Yes, very harsh. He misses my true meaning as he leans back. Satisfied, I'm sympathetic to his cause. I better get down to work. Finished. Looks like I am too. Good job. The two of us connect up the lines of our patterns, mine being as close a copy as I could manage to hers. With a grunt, I lever myself up from the floor and look around. Aside from Monaco and myself, there's only Kinji left finishing off a sign, as well as Lily and a couple of students talking among themselves in the classroom. Looking at my watch, it's no surprise. It's getting pretty late. Need a hand? I offer a hand to Hanako, which she uses to get herself up. As she does, I can't help but glance at her wrist. If her scars extend even to there, just how much of her body was burned? I feel a pang of guilt about it, however, as she quickly covers her wrist with her other hand. Looks good, doesn't it? She looks surprised for a moment, before noticing that I mean the banner. It does, I, I guess. Her smile shows that she feels a slight sense of pride in the result, just as I do. With the floor significantly neater for the decorations being placed on desks and shelves, it's much easier to get to Lily as we cross the room. We finished the banner. I guess that's all that needs to be done. Lily gives an appreciative nod. Thank you, Hisao. Hinako. If there's any way I can thank you. It's fine. Beats sitting in my room studying at any rate. I don't mind either. She nods before suddenly remembering one last person. Oh. Is Kenji still here? Just as I open my mouth, Kenji gives the answer from the other side of the room. Yeah, just finished. He carefully slides his sign into an empty section of shelf to dry, before quickly walking past us and out the door. See ya, man. Peace. The remaining two students say their goodbyes to Lily before taking their cue to leave as well, leaving only the three of us. Well, I guess that's everyone. I hope we don't have to do anything like that again. Working past school time? Indeed. The class's plans this year were ambitious. Maybe too ambitious. The, the stalls look nice, though. She's right. It shows that a lot of work's gone into them. My, my. I'm sure a lot of us would be glad to hear that. At least now, there's not much work to do until the festival itself. Um, it, it's getting pretty late. Sh should we go? That's probably a good idea. Are you going back to the dorms as well, Hassel? Yeah, I guess I'll tag along. The nighttime lighting really makes the gardens look quite different. Compared to the usual look of lush greenery, things are much more calm. Being that it's so late, the lack of students around probably helps. Thought one or two can be seen scurrying to and from the dorms, trying to eck the most out of their approaching curfews, but no more. I died. That killed me. All that can be heard is our footsteps, in addition to Lily's cane regularly, gently tapping the ground in front of her. It's nice to finally be but it's nice to finally be able to relax a bit after the mad rush during school. Without even noticing it, I let out a small yawn. Tired? Yeah. Still getting used to the flow of things, I guess. The, uh, thing with Shizune took me kind of off guard, though. I grit my teeth a little at the candid mention of their rather public spat. That said, I do want to sort out when the world was behind it. Ah, uh, about that. I'm sorry about it being so public. Shizune and I go back some ways. Her voice seems slightly irritated as she remembers Shizune, obviously unwilling to discuss it any further. 
I glance at Anako for her views on this, but her expression is unsurprisingly evasive and difficult to read. Either way, I guess her apologizing for it is something, even if my curiosity goes unanswered. I'll be glad once the festival is over in any case. The change of topics welcome, clearing the thickening air quickly. I can imagine. My old school's festivals were a lot more low-key than this. Yamaku stresses the idea of a school community, so the staff likes to make our festivals in such special occasions. And yet the students are the ones who do all the work. What an unfair world. Anaku and Lily both chuckle in agreement, savoring the fact that none of the staff are around to hear our grumbling. I suppose coming from a strict all-girls school has helped me a bit with Yamaku. Compared to there, Yamaku is much more relaxed. That'd go away towards explaining her well-bred speech and behavior. In any case, as we come up to the dormitories, it eventually comes time to leave for our respective rooms. See you, Lily, Anako. The two both give us polite nods before setting off to the women's dorms, just next to the guys. As is to be expected of such an arrangement, there's a staff member casually patrolling around outside to prevent any nighttime shenanigans. Walking past him, I quickly stretch my arms and rub my neck, both quite sore after having worked on the floor for so long before walking to my room. It feels good to actually have direction, though. After so long in the hospital, the everyday facts of studying, homework, and teachers seem almost a blessing. I guess if things continue like this, my Tommy Yamaku might turn out okay. Adhering to the nurse's nagging voice in the back of my head, I set my alarm clock to wake me up early enough to go jogging again. I made a promise and I'm going to keep it. Besides, Emmy is bound to rat on me if I don't show up. But it's not all that bad. Ah. My morning alarm goes off and I flail about uselessly for a while until I remember that I've decided to give morning runs another shot. I don't know if this was my greatest idea, but I'm determined to keep going. This is about my health after all. Sure, things haven't been great lately for me, but that doesn't make existence so intolerable that I'm not going to try everything I can to stay healthy. Besides, it's all about asserting some kind of control over this thing, right? If I can manage that, well, I can manage anything. At least that's what I keep telling myself. Once again, it would appear that I'm not alone in my run. Emi has apparently been here for some time. Looks like she's already worked up a good sweat. Just when the hell does she come down here anyway? Oh, it's you! Damn you, Emmy. I'm surprised to see you again. Why's that? Well, not many people actually manage to come back for a second try. She frowned, seemingly annoyed by a passing thought. Like the rest of the track team, for instance. Still, it was only supposed to be on a volunteer basis, so it's not that big of a shock. And I guess it's pretty early in the morning. A shrug and suddenly it appears that she's forgotten what she was talking about. The frown disappears entirely, and she seems to snap back to her previous train of thought. So, come on then. What? You're here to run again, right? Well, yeah. So come on. I find myself suddenly grabbed and yanked onto the track. Things seem to be set on mirroring yesterday's run. This is, I seem to be struggling, while Amy moves with an effortlessness that I find enviable. It's incredibly bothersome to be so easily worn out. I know I should be patient, work towards things gradually, but it's difficult to stay positive about this. We round the track and start on our second lap. Amy seems to have grown impatient keeping pace with me and begins to pull away. This is where I gave out yesterday. Will I be able to do more? Nope, because pretty much all you need to do on Emmy's path is say yes to the nurse, but to get Emmy, all you have to do is, when the nurse asks you to be serious, yes, and then come back another day and go for it. There you go, you have Emmy. Good job. Take it easy. I let Emmy go with her own pace, and she doesn't show mercy, pulling half a lap ahead of me in an instant. I don't blame her. I mean, it's not as if I'm really putting up any effort out here, right? 
Instead, I'm just running at a steady pace, which is what I should be doing, right? There's no need to go pushing my limits at this stage of the game. God, is this even worth it? As we finish the second lap, I break off again. Emmy keeps going, and it almost seems to me that she's disappointed. Well, that's stupid. I don't have anything to prove to her. Come to think of it, I've got nothing to prove to myself either. No, you have something to prove as how. You got a complete realism expert. I'm just fine the way I am. And what I'm not is a runner. This was probably a bad idea. Maybe there's something else I can do instead of this. Getting up this early sucks anyway. There's gotta be some other way to keep healthy. Walking, maybe? Nice afternoon walks. Yeah, that sounds good. Running isn't for me. I wave to Emmy and head back to my room. I'll think of something else later. Back in my room, the first thing I see is the familiar row of medication bottles lined up on the top of my dresser, and it makes me depressed as usual. Yeah, I think that would make most people depressed to know their life hinges on taking, like, probably, I don't know, I guess this how it probably has like five or six different things. It's annoying. I thought I was okay. I thought I had to make my peace with this thing, gotten over it, but what I really did, I allowed myself to forget that I have a problem. Being here really reminds me of the reality, and trying to fight against it just hurts. Reflecting on it is only going to do so much. I've done this before, for months. It seems like it's time to get over it. If I allow myself to forget that my life is definitely not going to be as long as those of others, I won't get anywhere. My life was... May... Eh. My life may be different from others, but it is a life in progress. That is how I'll rationalize it. I down the usual handful of pills, trying to push the sudden dreary feeling out of my head. Then I prepare to head out to class early, as usual. As I step into the hallway, I notice Kenji coming around the hallway corner, stealthily making his way over to his room with a large bag. As he sneaks past me soundlessly like a ninja hiding in plain sight, I call out to him. Sorry, Kenji, you didn't put enough points into stealth. You need about 20 more points to hide in plain sight like that. But you're pretty good, I mean, you already got the perk for silent footsteps. Just level up a few more times. Grind on some low-level slimes. Hey. He jumps at the sound of my voice. Oh, hi man. I didn't know she there. I'm really tired. I think it's more like he didn't see me, but that's not the issue. Where have you been this early? Shopping? Nah, I wasn't shopping. Sometimes I have to visit the math teacher. Yeah, I figured it would be a good idea to find out where the next exam was. Since he tells you in advance if you want. So, then, what's in the bag? I thought I'd go shopping while I was outside. I need supplies to continue the fight against the vast feminist conspiracy. Uh, okay. I thought you didn't go outside. I wear a hat now. I decide not to point out that he's not wearing a hat. An awkward silence settles between us, and then Kenji breaks it by pushing his door open slowly, releasing a creaking sound into the air that only makes the moment seem more awkward. He sets the bag down inside his room and then closes the door. I'm surprised you went out of your way to find out a test date. Trying to take advantage of an opportunity to study is pretty diligent. I never study. Oh. I just wanted to know when the next test day was. I'm still going to take it, duh. I need to know so I don't know that. I need to know so I know what day I can't afford to skip class. I usually send out updates on that crap by phone. So I had to step out and check up on it. Bleh. And why do you have to go out when you can get it by phone? I don't carry a phone. What do you mean you don't carry a phone? You mean you leave it at home? No, I don't use phones. I don't have a phone. Phones. I have no phone. Why don't you have a phone? How can you not have a phone? No phone at all? No phone? I just don't like phones. Actually, I'm kind of scared of them. I don't know why. I think it's some kind of repressed trauma. Basically, when I hear a phone, I'll get nervous. It's my darkest secret. I have two theories on it. Either I have some fear of receiving in some unidentified, ominous life altering doom call, or I was beaten with a phone in the past. Beaten so badly I can't remember it. Beaten in the head. Well, where else could I get beaten with a phone that would make me unable to remember it? The ass? Nah. Kenji's accent is breaking. Unexpectedly logical. I feel very depressed now, sensing this conversation is more or less over. Kenji opens the door again and prepares to head inside. Yeah, I'm going to sleep, dude. Have a good one. 
class is going to start in like 20 minutes. Already did something today. I'm too tired to go to school. Hey, you need some lip balm? I accidentally bought two because I thought the store had started selling individual AA batteries. Thanks, but no thanks. Whatever, man. He swiftly enters his lair, finally letting me go to class. I'm getting the part there. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you later.